Hello, biology students. Today we're going to continue talking about non-Mendelian genetics for part two. Specifically, let's look at blood type genetics. Let's jump in. So for human blood types, we're going to be looking at not only codominance, but also this idea of multiple alleles. Multiple alleles means that there's a lot more versions of traits than we're used to. More than three is the definition of multiple alleles. So what I'd ask that you do is you draw this image, a box, with circles in them. These kind of ovals represent the different types of red blood cells that could exist in your body. All right, and here are our different blood types. We can have a blood type A, blood type B, blood type AB, and blood type O. And the difference between these blood types is what's on the outside of the red blood cell. And we're going to do some drawings and label those drawings in our notes. So for blood type A, let's say we have the protein that looks like this on the outside of our cells. For blood type B, let's say our protein looks more square-like. For blood type AB, since this is codominance, we're going to be able to see both A and B. Just like our run cow, we could see both red and white. So both things are present. Okay, and for blood type O, there are actually no proteins on the outside of blood type O. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the antibodies or anti, uh, antibodies in them. So for blood type A, there's the antibodies for blood type B because the body doesn't want anything that's not self in the blood. So if anything showed up that was blood type B, whether it was B or AB, as long as it had something the shape of B's proteins, this would cause a chain reaction. This would connect with that protein and it would cause the blood to clump up, which would be very dangerous for the person. So that's really going to relate to what we're going to learn more about in class, which is about transfusions and such, which isn't as much genetics, but is pretty interesting. For blood type B, what kind of antibodies are there? Anti- a antibodies because we can't have any A blood type or AB blood type show up in there otherwise it's not self. Well there's no easy way to recognize O and really can I have either of these two antibodies in here? No I can't have any antibodies here because then I'd react to myself. For blood type O I actually have both antibodies because whether it's got an A or B, all of those are not self. Pretty interesting. So we'll learn more about this in class, but there is some pros and cons to being different blood types. We're going to ignore the idea of positive and negative blood types for now, and we'll learn more about that in class too. Let's talk about how we can make these blood types into allele notations. So first we draw a key. That's what we have over here to the left, okay? Our blood type A and B are codominant, all right? And our blood type O is recessive. This should make sense because what kind of letter have I drawn O as? A lowercase i. And this should make sense because I have base letter i and the uppercase raised letter, and that's what codominant looks like. Now in our chart that you're going to draw in your notes, we're going to go through each of the different options. On the left column, we're going to have what the blood type looks like, the phenotype, and the different genotypes that would make that phenotype. So let's go over our first one. For blood type A, I can be big A, big A, writing it like we normally do with our codominance. Or, or I could be I raised a little i. To simplify this, I could write this in a very simple form that we will not let you write down on tests and quizzes, but you can write it here to make more sense. This one on the left is kind of like writing big A, big A. It's a homozygous. This one is really like having A and an O. But what is O? O is recessive. So this version ends up looking like A. There's just a hidden O. 
Based on this pattern, I bet you can figure out what the genotypes will be for blood type B. Let's see. I could be homozygous for blood type B, which is I raise B, I raise B, or homozygous B. Or I could be heterozygous for B, I raise B, little I for O. The hardest parts for students is to remember that little I for O and remembering that this is a possible version for this phenotype. Our next thing is figuring out what we'd be for AB blood type. Based on knowing that this is codominant, what do you think our only option is? You're right. Our only option is I raise A, I raise B. This is kind of like heterozygous or a hybrid of A and B blood type. This is the only way we can have that. What is my way I can have blood type O? There's only one way. O is recessive. So the only way I'd really be an O blood type to look at, right, I can have hidden O's, but the only way to be fully O blood type is to have two little I's, which is each O. This is, makes doing blood type genetic problems very difficult, and we'll practice a lot together in class. So here's our one practice problem. Cross a AB parent with an O parent. Our first step, since we know our key from the last slide, is to write out the parent genotype in actual genotype letters properly. So that would be the following. This one is I raised A, I raised B. This one is little i, little i. Then we do a Punnett square like we have been doing. We put the letters where they go. It does not matter if I put this parent over here and that parent over here. It does not matter as long as I have the different options for a single parent over my two columns or over my two rows, I am good to go. And then I, through my normal Punnett square business, bring down the letters down the columns and across the rows like I normally do. And then I get my genotype and phenotype ratios. And that part's a little bit more difficult. So my phenotype ratio is as follows. I have 50% A. Let's look at which ones are my A's. Mm, this one and this one. Are they homozygous or are they heterozygous? They're heterozygous because they have this little hidden I here. All right. And how many B's? I have this. These two are my B's. All right. And how many percent A, B? None. How many O? None. So it is very, very, very important here you label what you're discussing. 50% A, colon, 50% B, colon, 50, 0% A, B. It's important you label. We do not do genotype ratios. It gets too long and too complicated. We will practice this a lot in class. Good job, guys.